Genesis chapter 4, verse 25, Adam had relations with his wife. Again, she gave birth to a son. So chapter 4 and chapter 5 are clearly descendants of Adam through Seth. Uh, we remember the descendants of Adam through Cain seem to be a complete mess. I mean, that's all we know. If we know anything about them, it's they're a mess. The opposite is Im implied or spoken of explicitly of the descendants of Shem. We don't know of Sheth, Seth. We don't know everything about them, but what we do know about them, they are godly people. For example, verse 21, Enoch lived 75, 65 years and became the father of Methuselah, and Enoch walked with God 300 years after he became the father of Methuselah, and he had other sons and daughters. So all the days of Enoch were 365 years. Enoch walked with God, and he was not, for God took him, right? And I don't know, which one's Enoch? I think this one's Enoch, because he's not here anymore. He's like, he's kind of unique out there, or he's really bright. By the way, sometimes life gets you down. You know, we pray, God, please come quickly. At least you don't have to live in it 365 years. Right? Especially that. I mean, it's getting bad. It's getting bad. Or longer for most of them. So never complain about it. <laughs> never complain. And especially about, oh, Lord, I have to live here so long. How long do I have to put up with, with these people that I'm living with? Right? Okay. Also, verse 28, Lamech lived 182 years and became the father of a son. He called his name Noah, saying, This one will give us rest from our work and from the toil of our hands arising out of the ground which the Lord cursed. All I know about Lamech is that he seems to put faith in the Lord. He knew what the Lord had said. He's waiting for the one the Lord had promised. And he says, hey, maybe this is the one the Lord has promised. So Lamech's light at least shines a little bit. By the way, we've heard the expression, what's in a name? What's the other Lamech like that we've read about? Just nasty. And this Lamech, at least he's not nasty, and it seems to be he's faithful. Two people can have the same name. One of them pleases God, one doesn't. And I'm talking about the name Lee here. I'm talking about the name that we all bear. Christian. Right? We're all... I'm a Christian. I'm a Christian. I'm a Christian. Well, just because you have the name Christian doesn't mean you're the one walking with God, right? right. Amen to that? Yeah. <laughs> okay. You want to say something more? No. Okay. Yeah, we're, we're all told to uh, sacrifice, present our, our bodies as a living sacrifice. Well, there are some who, who go by the name Christian who clearly are not, and then there are others who, from what we can see, it looks like they surely are, and the question is, what about me? Which... which, which how do I fall in there? Then there's Noah. Right? Noah was 500 years old and became the father of Shem, Ham, and Japheth. That's 32. Verse 32. By the way, a little trivia. Who is older, Ephraim or Manasseh? Yeah, you're right. Manasseh was older. Who is older, Jacob or Esau? Yeah. This is interesting. This is Esau. Who's older? Or who's the youngest? Shem, Ham, or Japheth? Nobody remembers that one. I didn't remember it until just the other day. It says later that uh, yeah, verse, chapter 9, verse 24, Noah awoke from his wine. He knew what his youngest son had done to him. But his youngest son's name is Ham. So I don't know why. But they are putting constantly, consistently, they always put Shem, Ham, and Japheth, but they've switched those two. Do you know why? Shall we talk about this? Okay, no. 
good because I don't know why. There's no reason given that I know of. That I, at, the, at least the others we have a reason and understanding. This one we don't even, we have no idea why he does it that I know of. Okay. All right. Verse 1 of chapter 6. It came about when the men began to multiply on the face of the land. Okay, so God's plan is happening, at least part of it, right? The, he said multiply, fill the land. Well, they're multiplying, they're filling the land. Uh, daughters were, were born to them. That the sons of God saw that the daughters of men were beautiful and they took wives for themselves whomever they chose. The Lord said, My spirit shall not strive with man forever because he also is flesh. Nevertheless, his days shall be 120 years. The Nephilim were on the earth in those days and also afterward when, they, when the sons of God came into the daughters of men and they bore children to them. Those were the mighty men who were of old, the men of renown. All right. I'll just tell you what I know, and I'll give you what I think. I know this. Some people suggest that the sons of God are angels cohabiting with beautiful women. Um, the reason they get that is twofold. Number one, in Job, the angels are called the sons of God. Okay. But in Romans chapter 8, what's the highest, what's the most privileged name you could possibly have on this world? Son of God. It's a privilege, okay? First uh, John chapter 3, verse 1 and 2, right? Okay, people are called sons of... Children of God are called sons of God. So, just because angels are called sons of God doesn't necessarily mean that these are angels. Second uh, evidence they provide is that the Nephilim, verse 4, the Nephilim were on the earth in those days and also afterward when the sons of God came into the daughters of men and they born children to them. It sounds like the sons of God and the daughters of men are bearing giant people. But that's not what it's saying. The giant people are a time marker. They're already there on the earth. Okay? And in fact, giant men will be much later. Right? If these were the products of angels and they were destroyed in the flood, then would we find them again? If the sons of God had cohabited with, if angels had cohabited with women, we might find them again. But in Numbers chapter 13, we have the sons of Anak, which are Nephilim. It uses the same word, okay? It says, verse 4 again, the Nephilim were on, like, if I said to you, it was when the carpetbaggers were in the south. You, you, would, you would say, yep, I know when that was, Okay. The Nephilim were on the earth in those days and also afterward, and, and the people say, oh, I know what you're talking about. I know about when. Okay. I don't think it's about angels cohabiting with women. It could be. I don't think it is. And if you're going to argue it is, uh, I'm going to probably say that doesn't necessarily follow from what you have said. I could be wrong. All right. Uh, it came about when the men... I, I know this. There are marriages that are based on... The only description here is their physical looks. That's the only description. Or, there are two descriptions. The woman's physical looks and the sons of God were God's children and they were making marriage decisions based on the wrong qualification. So there could be two. All I know is that there's marriages, and then the next thing we know is God is ticked off. That, that's all I can say for sure. I think there's a warning here. We don't have, you know, last time we did this, we had like 30 young people not married. But they've all, we all grew up. Well, we all got older. older. <laughs> so there's marriages. I take it to be that the evil line of chapter 4 mixed with the godly line of chapter 5 and the result is chapter 6. That is some speculation. It's the flow. That's what I got for you. I know that they get to the point where God says he is sorry that he has made man. Verse 5. The, law, the Lord saw that the wickedness of man was great on the earth and that every intent of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. 
That's bad. Now, lest we think, oh, that could never happen now, or that could never happen to me, it's not the same wording, but the same idea, kind of. Daring, self-willed, they do not tremble when they revile angelic majesties, whereas angels who are greater in might and power do not bring a reviling judgment against them before the Lord. But these, like unreasoning animals born as creatures of instinct to be captured and killed, reviling where they have no knowledge, will in the destruction of those creatures also be destroyed, suffering wrong as the wages of doing wrong. They counted a pleasure to revel in the daytime. They are stains and blemishes, re reveling in their deceptions as they carouse with you, having eyes full of adultery that never cease to sin. Enticing unstable souls, having a heart trained in greed, accursed children, forsaking the right way, they have gone astray and followed after the... This is the... I mean, it's not to the same degree or widespread, but those people that they're describing there in Second Peter, I think they fit right in back here. And again, this is written to those who live in the Christian dispensation, that could be me. Verse 6, the Lord was sorry that he made man on the earth, and he grieved in his heart. The Lord said, I will blot out man whom I have created from the face of the land, from man to animals, to creeping things, to the birds of the sky, for I am sorry that I have made them. And then here's one of our bright lights again, right? But Noah found favor in the eyes of of the Lord. Verses 1 through 7 are about a completely corrupt population. Actually, not completely corrupt because you've got Noah and you've got his children. If you calculate, I know John's done this, I should ask him for his PowerPoint. If you do your little PowerPoint up here and do your charts, Adam died first. 726 years before, well, Abel died first. 726 years before the flood, according to, you do the math here. The second to die, or I shouldn't say die, but stop living on the earth, was Enoch. 669 years before the Lord. And then Seth died, number three, 614 years before the Lord and Enosh 516 years before the Lord and Kenan 421 years before the Lord and Mahalalel uh, 366 years before the Lord and then Jared 234 years before the Lord and then Methuselah remember when he died? The year of the flood. The year of the flood. You think he died in the flood? Want to talk about that? He was old. Yeah, he was thankful that whatever the flood, just take me. That's right. Yes. Um, yeah, I, I did miss. There was one that died before. So, so um, there are several that saw their children and grandchildren die before them. Right? That would be pain. or leave, not die, but leave. One saw some of his descendants die. So there, there are. By the time the flood comes. We know this. There are eight righteous souls that are saved. If the Lord is looking down right now and looking in the world or the United States or New York or Jefferson County or whatever county you're from up there in the wilderness, does he look down and see but Lee or but Rhonda or but Janice? It says in verse 9, so verse 9 we'll, we'll talk about the records of Noah. So now we're talking about Noah, not so much Adam anymore. Noah was a righteous man, blameless in his time because of those from whom he had been born. No. Walking uh, it says Noah walked with God, which is the same thing that was said about Enoch, right? And in fact, Hebrews chapter 11 will tell us a little bit more about both of these. By faith Enoch was taken up so that he would not see death. He was not found because God took him up. Hebrews 11 
verse 5, he obtained the witness that before his being taken up, he was pleasing to God. So why is it, what, God looks down on all these people, most of them have gone horribly astray, but he sees those who are righteous, and he says, that, that, that one's mine, there's another one of mine. And the same thing, the, the story has not changed, right? This is, this is our story. Jesus is in the center, I'm blocking that out so we see the story. This is life. Now we're in 2019, but as far as God is concerned, there's been, not been a different day, right? And so he's looking down, he's looking for the direction. Here's Enoch, and as far as God is concerned, at the same time, if you will, is this Lee? Is this John over here? That's what we're looking for. That's what life, that's all life is about. All right, we need to stop unless somebody else has a comment or a question. Song? You let songs in. Who let songs? You let's yeah. Well, do you have a song? <laughs> okay.